Hello grade 11s, in today's video we're going to continue with electromagnetism and we're going to be looking at electromagnetic induction, what it is and how it works. Remember to stay tuned throughout the whole video, I give teacher tips along the way. Let's go! In the previous video we learned that a wire that carries an electric current will have a magnetic field surrounding it. We also had a look at the right hand rule and how to apply the right hand rule for a straight current carrying wire as well as a loop or circle of wire and for solenoids. So if you missed that video, check out the link in the description box below. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing on electromagnetic induction and what it is. So basically what you need to know is that when a conductor, now remember conductor is a wire, when a conductor and a magnetic field, which is created by a magnet, move relative to each other. So what that means is they can both be moving like this or the one can be stationary and the other can be moving so when they move relative to each other something really cool happens and that is an emf or voltage is induced across the ends of the conductor so you can have a conducting wire just like that connected to a light bulb which obviously at this stage nothing's happening nothing's lighting up or you can connect it to what we call a galvanometer so this is something that detects the flow of current and then if we have that current carrying all that that conductor and we move a magnet relative to that conductor all of a sudden we have an emf all of a sudden we have a voltage all of a sudden we have a current so you'll see the light bulb lights up or the galvanometer needle will deflect which means it'll move this is something really amazing that happens it's called electromagnetic induction and the discovery of this has been really really amazing because it has basically resulted in the large scale generation of electrical energy, the development of turbines in order to generate electricity and generators. So you can see over here behind me. So this little picture over here is a picture of a generator. And in this generator, we rotate the coil. So you can see that there's a little arm over there and it's rotating the coil. Basically, we are moving the conductor relative to the magnet. And that is resulting in electromagnetic induction and it's causing an electrical current to flow through the circuit. All of a sudden, we have essentially converted mechanical energy, which is the rotating of the coil, into electrical energy. And as you can imagine, this was a massive, massive discovery because we are now able to generate electricity. So basically, again, like these images are showing, we move the bar magnet in or out of the coil or we move the coil over the magnet. And this creates an EMF, which is a voltage and therefore a current. So let me show you how it works. So what you see behind me is called a FET simulation. I will link the simulation in the description box below if you want to try it yourself. But as you can see on the screen, what I have is a loop or a coil. This is my conductor and it's attached, there we go, over here to a light bulb. Here is a bar magnet. At the moment, nothing is happening. There's no current flowing through the wire, no current flowing through the coil, the, bar, the light bulb has not, it's not lighting up at all. But remember, electromagnetic induction is all about the relative movement. What that means is one of these have to move. So let's take a look at what happens if I move the bar magnet. So I'm going to pick up the magnet and I'm going to move it relative to my coil. As you can see, the light bulb is lighting up. What is basically happening is because I am moving these two, so the bar magnet and my, my conductor relative to one another, what is happening is an EMF is being induced, in other words, produced or created across the ends of the coil, which is obviously causing a current to flow through the circuit, causing the light bulb to light up. So just take a look. If I take my bar magnet and I hold it stationary inside the coil, as you can see, the bar magnet is inside the coil, but it's not moving. What do you see? What's happening? There's no induced EMF, therefore there's no induced current. That means the light bulb is not lighting up. There has to be relative movement. In other words, the coil or the magnet have to be moving relative to one another. So either I need to pull the magnet out like this, or I need to push the magnet in like this. So as long as there's movement, then there will be an induced EMF and therefore an induced current. So this is basically how we explain electromagnetic induction, so changing magnetic field. It's very important that the magnetic field must be changing. 
and how we change the magnetic field is if we move one or two of the things relative to one another and therefore it's around a conductor induces which means creates or produces an emf and then an electrical current here's another picture that illustrates the concept and it's all about how we have a change in magnetic flux it's got to do with the changing magnetic field okay and this is how it works in real life if we think about a generator or a turbine we are rotating the coil so we're moving the coil the bar magnets are stationary basically what happens is the magnetic field lines that pass through the coil so these lines over here that changes it as as long as we're rotating the coil the magnetic field lines are changing okay so the magnetic flux is changing and that basically induces a current and an emf in the coil and the light bulb lights up now take a look at these two pictures over here and tell me if you notice a difference between these two pictures so picture number one i am pushing the south end of a magnet into the coil look at which way the galvanometer so this over here is called a galvanometer basically detects or measures the current induced so when i'm pushing the south end of the magnet into the solenoid this is called the solenoid look at which way the galvanometer is deflecting look at which way the arrow is moving when i pull the south end of the magnet out of the solenoid out of this coil look at the direction in which the galvanometer needle is moving it's in the opposite direction so when i push the south in when i pull the south out the galvanometer deflects in the opposite direction and we can actually illustrate this here with the simulation so let's have a look okay so in my first instance i'm pushing the south end into the coil watch what happens to the this is a an example of a little meter over here this meter over here is detecting induced emf or voltage okay so watch what happens when I push the south end into the coil. Okay, let's do that again. I'm pushing the south end into the coil. Let's look at the galvanometer or the little meter over here. Okay, now look what happens when I pull the south end of the magnet out of the coil. Do you see that the needle deflects in the opposite direction? Now, the reason for this happening has to do with something else that we will learn in an additional video, but just keep that in mind this is a summary of what happens in the different circumstances so magnet pushed into coil so the north end in this case is being pushed into the coil the galvanometer needle deflects or moves in one direction when i pull the north end of the magnet out of the coil the galvanometer needle reflects in the opposite direction if i hold the magnet stationary and the coil is stationary there's no deflection of the galvanometer and in, the, in your exam, what they could say is they could say, why? Why is this happening? And you will need to say that there will only be a deflection of the galvanometer if there's an induced EMF or an induced current. And there will only be an induced EMF and an induced current if there's relative motion between the magnetic field and your conductor. And that's because there must be a change in magnetic flux. So here's another way to explain it in case they ask it in your tests or in your exams it's all about relative motion now in the next video we will be looking at electromagnetic induction and faraday's law in particular so we were basically speaking about faraday's law but i'll explain it in a little bit more detail and i'll explain how to calculate induced emf and this is basically using faraday's law subscribe for more videos like this and i can't wait to see you guys in the future bye everyone